All right, hopefully I'm audible. Welcome to Hashi Talks 2022. Thank you for having me. I'm the CTO at Benchmark Corp. And I will share with you how you can do sustainable Git flow and Git ops, generally using Terraform. And I wanted to preface this by explaining to everybody that uh, there is an economic impact, there is a environmental impact. And what I'm gonna show you today doesn't exist anywhere else. You will have never seen these methods before and we're re-engineering how the SDLC functions. I took a picture from Kiribati, which is an island that's actually going underwater. And I'm gonna show you facts today that represent why they're going underwater and what we can do about it as engineers using infrastructure as code and GitOps to maintain a better planet. Uh, so we talk about cloud waste, I'm actually gonna show you how we can fix it, not only practicing, but changing how we do the SDLC to achieve it. So let's go to the numbers. To get a better understanding of the statistics, I want to explain data centers and power usage. 1% of the total global electricity demand, which is basically from 2018, 205 terawatts of power is consumed. And this is from a data center perspective. It's part of heavy emissions as well. There was new studies that came out recently about a month ago that said, well, that's actually probably 2% because data centers also consume water, run water treatment plants, and all of that function has a very large environmental impact. So, if we move into the next step, which is maybe organizations are doing a good job of managing those emissions and how we manage those data centers. And there is a study that came out last week about basically the greenhouse gas emissions of 25 companies, which represent 5% of the total uh, creation, which is 2.7 gigatons of carbon dioxide in, in the earth uh, per year. There's a corporate responsibility. So the question becomes, if I don't operate very well, are they gonna at least use renewable energy? And this is where I'm not presenting bad stance or good stance, I'm just presenting these stats. So what we recognized was Benchmark needed to create using HashiCorp capabilities across multi-cloud, new SDLC practices. The reason for that is there is no organization today with high integrity on their climate change strategies and implementing them. Uh, two of the cloud providers, which I don't need to name, are in low integrity. So what it's telling us is the problem is not a responsibility of the corporation, it's a responsibility of the engineers to use practices and be very cautious how we consume those resources because it is one to 2% and probably going even higher as we analyze the data. So let's analyze the data. I know I'm starting with some metrics to begin with, but in reality, you need to have these metrics to warrant our new practices, and I'm gonna show you those live, and I'm gonna show you how you get there. If we look at the whole cloud, and this is IDC, they basically said today, $706 billion is spent on private cloud and public cloud consume, just the spend of the cloud itself. They then broke it down into non-production workload and production workload. From our side, we went to the SDLC and determined, how do we fix this? What portion of this can be fixed? And what do I do with the increase? So by 2025, they also said, we're gonna grow by 84%. Now, if you take the context of 2% of the world's energy and heavy, basically the second most usage of water is gonna grow in four years by 84%, you're gonna to go to almost 4% of the world's energy consumption and the second largest water consumer. So what do we do about it? So what we've done is we've come up with a new SDLC method uh, with adding a little more additional context around it is 76% of the time, non-production is idle. These are statistics. Of workloads that run as non-production, three quarters of the time, they're never touched and never doing anything. And if you quantify that, it's basically $434 billion of economic impact, uh, of uh, environmental impact, and we can rewind the clock more than four years of potential waste on cloud waste. How the hell do you do that is basically what we're gonna talk about next. As an engineer, if we change our CICD methods, and that's our specialty at where we operate, we have DevOps, CICD methodologies, how can I help Earth with the cloud waste based on behavior and not make it a corporate responsibility because that's not actually working. The statistics are heavily against that corporations are actually fixing this. 
we articulated two methods that need to change. One method is sustainable Git flow, and the other method is sustainable Git ops. Both of these terms do not exist. We've invented them, and I'm going to show you how it operates. I have a snippet here, but in reality, it's a progress. So this is an end state where destroying from a GitOps perspective and destroying after Git flow of just application releases meet a confidence level, we can change how that $434 billion is wasted. We can make it zero. This is functional. We implement this for clients today. I I'm going to go where people start, and then I'm going to work you towards what we actually need to achieve. Where we start is we front end things with a load balancer, right? Everybody says, hey, I want to go to the cloud. I want to figure out cloud native. Uh, I'm going to put my application as a VM in the cloud. I'm then going to move forward. I'm going to figure out how I do HA. I'm going through the methods of how you'll get to uh, sustainable Git flow and Git ops. In this circumstance, just having HA still leaves me with the uh, need to fix the machine and I can't handle load correctly, which kind of is leading towards why cloud native was invented. I then need to run stateless. So if a machine goes down, I'm not impacting my customers, but I still need to fix it. And then if I move forward, I go into self-healing. Self-healing is the method at which a machine and the config as code and infra as code builds a new machine puts it back into the pool and becomes live, customers are unaware. This again is still not cloud native and not really using GitOps methods. Now, once you've achieved self-healing methods, we move into breaking into microservices, which builds upon what you had, taking your monolithic applications, still having them as VMs, these are not con containerized, it's just breaking your services into something that can become a container, moving them then to a container. The reason we're doing this is so we can scale much more quickly and be, become much more dynamic and then get to the point where speed is saving the environment, speed is saving dollars, and speed also gives us governance if you're doing this correctly. So once we add Kubernetes and the ingress, we now can scale up, scale down, scale horizontally, vertically, and deploy our applications. And then what generally happens is people will create continuous deployment. And I'm going to tell you continuous deployment in itself is fundamentally flawed. Uh, I know no, nobody's saying that because most people are trying to achieve this. If I go through a CI CD pipeline and I go end to end, it's not really good for going backwards and forwards as things are progressing and being destroyed. It's very functional in nature, end to end process. So this is really good for a pipeline to build out. What are my prerequisites to go from one stage to the next? What does it take to get a successful and secure build? What does it take to do dev uh, linting and functional testing? Same for QA, same for perf, same for staging, pre-prod, whatever the function is. And then layer in things like Terraform for on-demand environments as part of those pipelines. Again, we're still a pipeline. Pipelines are not great for having issues midway and then falling back to a merge request. It doesn't work well. So I then need to understand where do I save the environment? If I build and the build is successful and I validate that, I can destroy it. I can then do dev, do my dev testing, which is again, is part of the pipeline and destroy it. And that function is done by Terraform. Terraform is that on-demand function across all of these stages. And what you're trying to achieve here is a new SDLC method, which is sustainable SDLCs, which is impermanent non-production, right? This is what we call impermanent non-prod. But again, this isn't going to scale. This is still going to have challenges. So we're going to take it one step further. And I know this looks a little complicated, and it is. It's very complicated. But you build from one to the next. The context here is. I now have that sustainable uh, SDLC process, but I need to make it part of the Git process. The reason is each of these environment stages become segments that you can either merge or fall back. The merge and fall back makes the pipeline very modular in basis, but the consistency of the outcome is there. 
the reason we're doing this is so that when I have an issue, let's say in staging, I just need to go back to the develop branch, make my change and continue my pipeline from where I failed after I, rather than going from the beginning. So sustainable Git flow has built into it, which stages have destroy. And it also, also modularizes pipelines and allows you to go forwards and backwards and make Terraform and the functions of Terraform uh, environmentally friendly very environmentally friendly, so much so that $434 billion of wasted time where machines are not being consumed uh, because they're just sitting and we don't know how to get rid of them. We, we could potentially save 2% of the world's energy if we just change how we adopt uh, the software development life cycle. Very, very important. Uh, I'm just trying to share with you and articulate to you how this process operates. When you function as a pipeline, which I'll go to uh, I'll go to next. Uh, I'm going to actually try to show more than just a couple pipelines. I'm going to show multiple. So I'm just going to close from here and move into it. I'm going to start with the most common CI CD pipeline that exists today Jenkins. Like, so if everybody can see, I kind of zoomed in so everybody could see. This is just one of our demos. It's a Jenkins pipeline, which is continuous deployment. Terraform being the first stage within this pipeline where what you're doing here is you're creating and always consistently making sure the environment state is in place so that I can do the rest of my SDLC. It's compacted here where we've done the CI process, which is highlighted over here. I, I need to make sure I build my artifacts. In this case, I'm building a container because you're doing containerized cloud native deployments. You wouldn't have that step if you weren't. I then also have performance capabilities. These are these are requirements so that I have confidence so that I can destroy. So it's not just about deploying applications and destroying environments. It's about collecting confidence for production using metrics, using uh, validation, continuous verification methods of logs, maybe through an APM or whatever you're using versus people, deploying those applications and then testing them appropriately, having security gates as you need. But then because I did all this confidence for production, I can destroy, but pipelines are flawed when they're not tied to Git flow and they're not tied to GitOps. What I'm articulating here is what happens if something fails along these massive pipelines, you kind of either need to retry the stage if you can, but you, it, it's not linked to the merge request and fixing the code. So what we're articulating here is the pipelines themselves and the functions of them are actually very important and very valuable. But what you need to do is modularize them and link them directly to the code changes, the pull requests, and the merges. So I'm going to switch into another pipeline, not saying this isn't good. It's an incremental improvement so that we can figure out how to make the SDLC more sustainable and better for the environment and reduce cloud waste. I'm not going to show, because it's too complex, a application and an uh, infrastructure deployment pipeline. We are engineering next generation software development life cycles. This is a component that runs in a, a larger process where you'll notice it's tied to merge requests. This process is part of the Git flow. GitOps is sustainable because we've not only added the Terraform capabilities, we, we've also added the destroy uh, along the process. Now, the difference between this and the other pipeline that I was showing you is directly linking the code changes themselves, which is what failed when you tried to merge to the next or make a pull request and it didn't succeed in the environment when the pipeline ran. You still have pipelines, but if you tie them directly to Git flow, and there's only a certain amount of CI CD providers out there that facilitate these methods, GitHub Actions, uh, GitLab, this is being one of them. We could have shown GitHub Actions as well. It's very important because it helps you uh, iterate much more quickly. It helps you correct the behaviors uh, uh, within the process. And you don't have these fundamental end-to-end -end pipelines that are very hard to maintain. You have very segmented behaviors that are Git flow driven and, and Git ops driven. So if I go back to the impact statement and I go back to the beginning, 
if if the environmental impact of data centers are climbing two percent every four years and we don't manage their impact we're going to have water scarcity we're going to have greenhouse gas emissions going off the charts because water is actually consumed in data centers to cool them and that has water treatment power consumption that has a uh, water table impacts the more we consume and the less we become efficient there's almost a 50 percent usage in data centers that are highly ineffective because the sdlc isn't being appropriately implemented uh and go back to the statistics do not think that organizations that make commits and your consumption of them doesn't have a, a impact on the globe it entirely does because as you'll go back to the statistics here that was just published in February last week, uh, they're not my stats, it's, it's by the Corporate Climate Responsibility Monitor, an independent body saying nobody has high inter integrity, all the commits aren't being met, and the ones that are running data centers have low integrity. So what they're basically saying is these data centers are not energy uh, efficient, they have a large climate impact, a body which is going underwater and have seashells protecting their houses, walking their kids to school underwater, moving to Fiji because their island's going underwater is because not specifically this, we're just not acting responsibly in many ways. And at Benchmark, we thought, why don't we improve the SDLC so that we can reduce the energy consumption in this world um, and hopefully have a positive impact, not only on the economics, don't think of you don't think it's just environmental for companies consuming resources, be it your own data center, meaning your refresh budget or your uh, someone else's data center, the top, you know, whatever cloud provider, public cloud provider, your economics, your profitability goes up. But at the same time, your corporate responsibility, your environmental impact, your ESG and governance around that goes off the charts. You become a steward of Earth. Uh, and I know it's an unusual statement to say, but we can do multiple percentages of the global uh, per, uh, global energy consumption just by going back to the practice of adding a destroy stage because the things we're done collecting data from. So if we were to summarize, uh, the importance here is to realize that non-production has one purpose, confidence for prod. It does not need to be maintained. It does not need to persist. It provides zero value to a customer other than improving your resilience and reliability to go production. And if I destroy, guess how resilient you'll become if you can sustain the entire loss of your deployment itself and then rebuild it every single time. Higher resilience, lower cost, better impact on the environment and society, and all we have to do is change our SDLC practices to be sustainable from a GitOps perspective and a Gitflow perspective. And from a HashiCorp standpoint, they've given us the harness, which is Terraform and other products as well that you can work in there, such as Packer and others, to help you meet these requirements. Yes, this is advanced, but it has such a fundamental impact to Earth that at some point we need to be concerned about the islands that are going underwater and not be so wasteful that we leave our house with half the lights on and all everything running when we're not home. Why is it okay for the SDLC to do so within non-production? So I thank you very much for your time. I think I finished a little early, uh, but I hope the words that I shared are very impactful and data-driven and uh, that people will change their global practices for SDLC going forward and HashiCorp is integral to doing so.